evolution by natural selection, we have to look at what the words mean, right? That species evolve through the selection of mutations that provide a survival advantage. I think there is plenty of evidence that this is true. Evidence in the fossil record, evidence through comparative anatomy of species that currently exist, evidence through comparative genetics uh, uh, of species that also currently currently exist and, and earlier species. So I think that it is an established, it's pretty established that uh, new species evolve through the selection of mutations that provide a survival ad advantage. The problem is that today when new Darwinists talk about evolution by natural selection, they insert a notion in that package um, that in my view has no empirical evidence to substantiate it. It is a, a, a belief notion, if you will, which is that behind the mutations that eventually get selected for, there is no pattern, that they are purely and entirely random and purposeless, and that all the patterns that we see in nature today are created through natural selection and were not at all present in whatever process has led to the mutations that begun the whole thing. Uh, to prove this, or at least to show some evidence for this, we would need to run what we call a, a randomness test in information theory. Uh, but that would require data that is completely inconceivable to derive from, from the fossil record. We would have to have a fairly complete set of all mutations that happened over a fairly long period of time and correlate that to all the functional and, and structural characteristics that those mutations uh, have led to in the organisms uh, in order to be able to run a randomness test and see whether, in fact, there was no pattern behind those mutations to begin with. Uh, this is beyond any, any reasonable scientific attempts today. So as a conclusion, I think we don't have any evidence today uh, that the mutations behind evolution by natural selection were indeed purposeless, patternless, uh, and purely random. That is an article of faith, uh, in my view. Now, what I said seems to be so matter of fact right that one wonders how what a new darwinist uh, would say to this would say uh, in answer to this question and what they would say people like uh, richard dawkins and others is that we do not need to postulate that there is a pattern underlying the genetic mutations that give rise to evolution we don't need we do not need to postulate that pattern we do not need to postulate a creative intelligent agency or a telos uh, behind all that because natural selection even if operating on the basis of completely random patternless mutations would already be sufficient to create all the variety of the patterns of life today um, this begs the question uh, they say that based on the idea that uh, since all the patterns of life exist today and since the mutations must have been random, then nature itself is proof uh, that we do not need uh, to postulate anything else. Well, this begs the question. Uh, since we do not know whether the mutations were really random or not, since we do not have any randomness test applied with sufficient data from the fossil record to substantiate that, we do not know whether the patterns of nature that we see around us today indeed do not require a creative uh, agency uh, behind the mutations, a, a, a pattern underlying the mutations. We just don't know that. So the hypothesis that um, I am entertaining here is that um, underlying the mutations that get selected for and lead to the evolution of the species, there is a creative agency, there is a pattern, there is a telos, a purpose, if you will. Not in the form of a superior intelligence that knows exactly how every life form should look like, otherwise we would not need natural selection, we would not need evolution, 
uh, this creative agency could build all animals' plants in the final form that, that is desired. Um, rather, the hypothesis is that um, this creative agency is experimenting in, in the laboratory of nature, uh, that there is some form of feedback from uh, the results of natural selection back into the probability envelopes underlying uh, the genetic mutations, uh, and that the process is being, in a way, nudged along so it gets warmer and warmer towards a final goal or a telos, a purpose, uh, but in a way that it, it is iterative. It's not one single step to the end that is already known in advance. No, no, it's iterative steps towards an end that is yet unknown, uh, and what is known is whether these iterative steps are getting the system closer uh, to the characteristics that are desired at the end in a kind of iterative laboratory. Now you may ask yourself, how do we choose, how do we set our own opinion regarding this matter, right? Um, is evolution um, driven by a pattern of mutations that ultimately get selected for iteratively, or, or are the mutations entirely random and all the patterns are created by natural selection? As I argued, I think there is no evidence to say that the mutations are random. We have never performed a randomness randomness test, and we don't have the data to do that, even if we wanted to. Um, strictly speaking, there is no established evidence for the hypothesis that, that I put forward either. And when I say established evidence, what I mean is accepted scientific evidence under laboratory conditions, if you will. Um, my own position, though, is that nature itself, in a way, it provides abundant evidence, at least to me, subjectively speaking, uh, that there, there, there must be an underlying pattern. Um, personally, I find it very hard to conceive that the richness, the variety of nature, uh, is indeed uh, the result of a purely mechanical, blind, random, patternless process at bottom, and that all patterns uh, have evolved purely through natural selection. I, I find that uh, very hard to imagine. Um, but scientists must believe this. They must believe that uh, the mutations are random because it's a paradigmatic requirement. Uh, the current scientific paradigm requires that this be so. Uh, even though when we say randomness, we are basically saying nothing because randomness is an absence of patterns. So we are not saying anything when we say that. Nonetheless, it must be considered to be the answer because of the current scientific paradigm, which is a set of subjective beliefs uh, and assumptions. Now, the ironic thing about this is that uh, we here discussing the theory of evolution and, uh, and the natural history of ourselves and the species that uh, share the world with us, we are the result of this very process that we are talking about. And uh, we tend to think that uh, we should be able to arrive at final answers and, and unveil the final truth, right? Um, but if evolution by natural selection, regardless of whether the mutations are random or not, if evolution by natural selection is correct, um, then the structure of our brains, our bodies, have been optimized for survival, not for understanding the truth not even for seeing reality as it is, but for seeing it in whatever distorted or partial way would favor survival the most. So here we are, machines that have been, bio-machines, if you will, that have been optimized for survival, um, thinking that uh, we can see reality exactly as it is, and that our theories are pretty much close to the final truth. That is the ultimate ironic uh, naivete.